Hello and welcome to this edition of Office Hours with the Practical Prof and Friends. And in this episode, we are celebrating women. This episode will be released during March of Women's History Month. And I am so excited to have my guest today. And my guest is Rachel Skye, and she is the fearless creator of Studio Spin and the Fierce Confidence Signature Program. As a lifelong teacher at art, she opened Studio Spin in 2013 to teach confidence to women through pole dance. We're going to talk about that. Nine and a half years later, the studio has grown to offer a variety of creative dance and empowering experiences to all genders. This is the, just the kind of stuff we like to talk about here. So please welcome my guest, Rachel. Rachel, so glad to have you here. I'm super excited to be here, Santo. Thank you for having me. Of course. As you know, we do uh, office hours with Practical Prof and friends, and Rachel and I have been friends and colleagues and collaborators for, I can't tell you how long. I don't even know. And, <laughs> yeah, and I can't tell you how many different projects either, because they've been across the board between film and probably theater and uh, web design and all kind of fun stuff. So this is really exciting. So I guess I want to start with, you know, because I know, a lot of the talents you have, artistic talents is in order the organizational talents. So what's leading you or what led you to carve this niche in your career as uh, in life coaching? So I, I feel like my whole career as a teacher, specifically pole dance instructor has led me to this point in my life. Like I just, I had this epiphany, epith epiphany, I think in 2020 when I had a lot of time to think. Um, <laughs> And over the 14 years of teaching pole and central movement to women, I've noticed a change that happens in my students who start to build trust in their bodies from learning these physical moves, um, which in turn spills over into trusting themselves in other parts of their life. And um, it, it it's something that happens organically and it's such a joy to see like my students blossom um you know a lot of times i see them walk into the studio um you know shy um you know not knowing to expect unsure of themselves and as they start to explore movement they start to get in touch with their body connect with their body um i can see this change where now they're walking into the studio a little bit taller they're a little more sure of themselves, they're speaking more confidently, they're walking with um, better posture. And I've, I've realized like, oh my God, you know, I, you know, it's not, I'm not teaching dance to these women, I'm teaching confidence, I'm teaching empowerment. And I, I've realized like, this is where I belong. Like I found my life purpose here, um, really working with women and helping them find their voice. Um, and because I, I, I see it every day, women who uh, don't trust in themselves, women who are in a dead end relationship, dead end job or dead end situation, and they don't feel like they have the strength or confidence to bring themselves out of that um, because they feel like they're, they're not heard, they don't have a voice. And so I really want to work with those, those women and, and help them find themselves and live an abundant life. That's it's awesome and for those of you listening or watching yes we said pole dancing and mm -hmm. i gotta tell you you know i i am ignorant in so many contexts of life and this is definitely one of those but i i love how much respectability first of all you brought to the art and you bring to the art and like this this is not just a byproduct as you said this is like the real deal of what comes out of the instruction Mm -hmm. Like how, how pole dancing? Like who would have thought? Um, yeah, I I've thought about this over the years so many times. Like, what is it about pole dance that feels empowering to women? Um, that could be an entirely different podcast episode. Um, right. but yes, there's definitely so many avenues. Um to pole dancing, so many components, um, so many ways it's used, um, you know, either for work, for art, for working out. I feel like I found my niche in the 
the body connection aspect of it, uh, because it really kind of forces you to connect with your body. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. So for someone who has felt a disconnection to their body and they start this movement practice, it's going to reignite or reconnect that mind to body. And that's where I feel I am at my best. That's where I feel like I excel at, I excel yep. at you know, teaching that to other people. So, you know, you said about, I, I can't imagine like the transformation. Well, I kind of, you know, in a little way with teaching, any kind of teaching, you see this transformation, but when people coming in and they're, they're not confident, they're slouch. So what kinds of themes do you see recurring in terms of your client base? What, what seems to be, or is there a pattern of, of needs? Um, so with my studio, we're, uh, very specific as to the type of experience that we offer because every studio is different. And I don't even really like to say I own a dance studio. I really just like to say we, we have, we teach confidence classes and pole dance is our means is our catalyst to reaching that goal. So for the clients that come to the studio and the clients that I work with, they are looking for, um, to feel sexy in their own body and, and whatever that means to them, because sexy isn't a look, it's a feeling. So, you know, there's a feeling that they, that they want, and they're not sure how to get to that place. Or um, maybe they had a recent um, phys physical change in their body, and they're wanting to, to love their body again, appreciate their body again. Um, you know, we talked about confidence, they're wanting to feel more confident in themselves, whether that's emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, and so we have crafted, we uh, curated uh, classes, experience that really caters to those needs and desires. We don't focus on pole dance as a means for a tough workout. I mean, that is kind of a byproduct of the class. But for us, you know, it's not about um, how many inverts you can do in a class to get your reps in. You know, it's like, how did achieving this invert make you feel? What kinds of obstacles or, um, you know, uh, fear stories that you have to overcome to achieve this move. So we really deep dive into, you know, more of an introspective space versus just the phys physicality of pole dance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just, so many thoughts coming to my mind about empowering women and there's just so many different ways and you just have to find the right niche a person has to and the, the mind body connection is wonderful because at least now we're allowed to talk about mindfulness in, in business years ago <laughs> you, you would never talk about mindfulness oh i, I am yeah. connected with my body i i've been doing you know workshops with emotional intelligence and one of the sessions is pretty much mindfulness mm -hmm. you know and my mba class pretty much one of the sessions is about being uh present yeah. so it's awesome it's awesome what is for you like what what motivates and drives you i'm sure is the successful relationship this transformation what does that look like does is do you see like okay they're going up 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 and then they go down and then they're going up 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 you know is it cyclical or is it like is there a pattern to this what what tells you that they're going to be on the track that you're going to be able to get them maybe a step forward so one thing I've learned about myself um, on my own journey is I saw things very linearly, linearly, and I realized people aren't linear, they're fluid, you know, they ebb and flow, and there's not one straight path that someone needs to take in order to get to this place of confidence or empowerment. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very windy road. And so I've, I've had to embrace that myself in my own life um, because I, I was seeing that in my students, you know, journey. Um, and there's going to be times where uh, a student, if we're talking specifically about learning the moves, where they're going to learn the moves more quickly, and then everyone hits a plateau. I don't know when that plateau will happen for you, but it will, where you feel like you're no longer moving forward, you're stuck. And, you know, we can say that about any part of our life, but um, the, the point is to keep pushing forward through that plateau. And so for me, being there as a guide, as an encourager, um, as a, you know, person to, to reminding them, like, here's where you were, here's where you are, you know, you've made great strides. Um, 
And I think that's important to have that sort of cheerleader on the side, um, helping my clients along the way. Um, I kind of feel like um, a successful coach, client, you know, teacher, mm -hmm. student relationship is reciprocal where, you know, it's not just the teacher talking and saying things, but it's the student and the client also reciprocating and communicating with the teacher where they're at, what are their needs are, because I can't help you if I don't know where you need help. Um, so it is a two-way street and um, I feel like the more open my students can be with me, um, the more I, you know, can help them reach the goals that they're trying to achieve. So it's such an enriching process when you're both open and, and there's that, like you said, the reciprocity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the best part I feel is when a student, you know, has overcome, you know, a challenge, whatever that challenge is. And then we're in a classroom and there's another student, you know, with us going through that challenge in the moment. And then, you know, the other students like, hey, I was there once, you know, this is how, you know, these are what I, the things that I did, you know, they're sharing their story with another, you know, fellow student. And then now they're reciprocating, you know, and it's starting to build this camaraderie, this community where it's no longer just me speaking or, you know, guiding or whatever, but now, um, you know, clients and students are sharing their stories with others and helping each other. And um, I, that's that's really magical when you, when I see that in a classroom, because it just, um, I don't know how to put it into words. It's like, I, you know, I started this fire, but I'm no longer only the only one keeping it going. You know, yes. it's collective. Yes. That's a great metaphor. <laughs> That's great. Um, you're listening and or maybe watching too. Um, Office Hours with the Practical Prop and Friends. And my guest today is Rachel Skye, who is the fearless creator of Studio Spin, where she uses creative dance to empower women, but all folks, all, all of her clients. Uh, I'm so excited about this. Um, one of the things that I've, I just come to the conclusion that I don't care what level employee, everyone should have a mentor, everyone. And I don't think that's the case. And I know from students that it's not the case uh, for many students. And I, I wonder uh, what your experience is. My, my hunches and my experience suggest that women are less mentored. I'm curious about what, how you have perceive that and if, you know, what, what can we do? What can you do? And what are you doing about helping clients get mentored? That is a very interesting observation, Santo. And I really had to take some time and think about this. Um, and as I'm kind of thinking back on my corporate life, when I worked corporate jobs, where it was primarily male dominated environments, um, I don't recall ever having anyone at least reach out to me and saying, Hey, um, would you like to be mentored? You know, or, you know, or do you want to grow in this way? It was more or less just, you know, being told what to do. And it wasn't until I left the corporate world, opened up my own business, um, and was kind of surrounded more by females that I started to receive that mentorship. And it wasn't something, the first part of that, it wasn't where, um, I was actively reaching out for a mentor. It was like, no, the, my original boss, um, the one who gave me a job as my first pole dance, pole dance instructing position, she reached out to me to mentor me to become a teacher. Um, and, uh, from there on, you know, working with in more of a female dominated environment, I started to see more of, um, mentoring opportunities. Now I started working with a business coach who was a female, um, five years ago. Um, and I, uh, she came into my orbit just from networking groups, like on Facebook, but I intentionally reached out to her to work with her. So that was one where, um, I realized I need a mentor. Um, and I, 
I, I really enjoyed working with another female mentor because she, she gets it. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's, it's interesting that once I kind of moved into a female dominant space, those mentor opportunities became more apparent. Um, and I feel like my responsibility now is taking all of this knowledge that I have learned and sought and sharing that with others, like seeking out people to share this knowledge with, not waiting for people to come to me, like no going to them and saying, hey, I really would love to help you. Um, you know, how or how can I help you? Are you looking for help? Um, because I I don't want to just sit on this knowledge. I really want to share it. And I want to share it with other women because again, I see a lot of women too afraid to ask for things. And so part of that mentorship is teaching them the confidence um, to go after what they want, to ask for what they want, to voice their wants and needs. Yeah, and and you know, men listening, watching, um, we have responsibility here. We we need to be allies, we need to make gestures, we need to step up because think about it, you know, as a guy growing up in a, in a business culture, <laughs> pardon me, how much did you have to reach out to somebody? Most of the time people reach out, reached out to you as, as a guy, hey, you wanna go gra uh, grab a drink or you wanna go on a golf course, where it's okay to do that stuff. And still, you know, you'd think by 2023 it would be okay, but it's still not okay for women to make those overtures or to even do those kinds of activities as much. I, it concerns me a little bit sometimes how far we have not come. Um, yeah, and I think I think the the informal experience really gives you so many opportunities to mentor because then it's not so scary because they're already talking to you and they already have a great rapport, a great relationship. We got about three minutes. So tell me, what do you wanna see? How, do, how can this business grow? What would be your ideal vision that, you know, when we come back in five years and we look back and we say, yep, it's exactly what I wanted this to, to look like um, when we talked five years ago? So I really want to move into this life coaching space, working for women. Um, the Fierce Confidence Program is the springboard to that. And so I see myself... Um, in a more mobile capacity where I can travel more, you know, so I can serve more than just the community of Lancaster, but other states and maybe either other, other countries, but um, working with women all over the place, um, with adult women. But uh, I really um, want to also work with young women, young girls, um, 13 to 17. Um, that's kind of ultimately the place I want to land is working with girls in schools or after school programs and teaching them at that young, vulnerable, volatile age about self-worth, self-value, using your voice, um, um, learning who you are, um, not being afraid to go after what you want. Um, because I have seen this so often, you know, girls of that age, they, um, they often they don't know who they are. And so they kind of go with the flow and sometimes end up in not good situations that have long-term consequences. And I feel like how much could different could their life have been, you know, if they had more confidence in themselves and what draw me, drew me to this conclusion is a lot of the women, I, the adult women I work with in their thirties, forties, and fifties. And just now they're getting to that place of learning who they are. And I keep thinking, what could their life have been had they known this at you know, 13, 14, 15. And so that's ultimately where I would love to land is working with young young women, young girls. But you're making such a difference already and it's only gonna get more impactful um, with that vision. I, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. How about some contact information if people wanna reach out um, and we'll put it up on the screen. Website is? Uh, yes, my uh, studio is studiospin.net. Or you can also check out my Fierce Confidence program. That's fierceconfidence.net. And um, my email, if you want to contact me, is rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, at studiospin.net. 
Thank you so much for uh, taking time out to be with us today. Thank you. My pleasure, Santo. It was great. This has been Office Hours with the Practical Prof and Friends, and you've uh, been listening and watching my guest, Rachel Skye from Studio Spin and Fierce Confidence Signature Program. Um, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.